The Quadcast and Quadcast S are two microphones from HyperX, a company more renowned for its headphones than it is for its mics. Now considering it's going up against the likes of Blue and Elgato, it's certainly got its work cut out for it in order to stand out. However, with lots of features in an elegant design, does it manage to do that? Welcome to my tech gear, let's find out. Now both microphones offered by HyperX, both the Quadcast and the Quadcast S, are essentially the same microphone with a couple of minor differences. First up, the Quadcast just has red LED lighting and it has a mini USB port for connection to a PC. The Quadcast S on the other hand has full RGB two zone lighting and it connects to the PC using a USB-C port. That's it. Those minor differences though do lead to a price difference, which I'll get to later. But for all intensive purposes, these are identical mics. So the sound test for one covers both and the feature sets on both are the same as well. So let's get into the features. Now first up is the design and I have to say I really do like the design of the mic. It is a lot more compact and svelte than a lot of other mics that you'll see in the market such as the Blue Yeti. And that's an advantage when you're trying to do streams or you're trying to do videos like this because it doesn't obstruct your view in the camera as much as some of the other mics do. And the color scheme of this is pretty much a standard gamer red and black. The slight difference on the Quadcast S is it has gray webbing for the shock mount instead of red and of course the RGB on the Quadcast S is configurable to any color in the RGB range rather than just the fixed red on the Quadcast. Now of course the most important thing of any mic is the sound quality. Doesn't matter what it looks like if it sounds awful. So the audio that you are hearing in this video is this mic and it will be the whole way through. So there are four polar patterns on this which means it's versatile for a number of different scenarios but probably what 90 to 95 percent of people are going to be using it for is the cardioid pattern. So that's a front only pattern which means it will pick up the sound right in front of it. So for podcasts, voiceovers, streaming, that kind of thing, that's the pattern that you're going to be using. It also has an omnidirectional pattern, which means it will pick up the sound all around it. So if you've got conference calls or multi-person interviews, that's the pattern you're going to use for that. Bi-directional will pick up the sound either side of it. So if you've got face-to-face -face interviews, that's really useful for that as well. And rounding it all out, we have stereo, which gives a very distinct left and right channel that it records, which is very useful for vocals and instruments. Now, as I said, I do think about 90, 95% of people are going to be using that cardioid pattern, but that versatility for the range of patterns means that this mic is useful for a lot of different scenarios. At the bottom of the microphone is the gain knob, which allows you to adjust the sensitivity from low to high. It's really easily accessible at the bottom which I really like to see. Some mics have it at the back which is a little bit of a fiddle to get to. The markings at the bottom though don't cover the full range of how far the gain knob turns so it's a little bit of hit and miss to get used to what that gain adjustment is like but once you've got the hang of it it's fine. Generally speaking you do want the gain knob to be as low as possible and yet your voice level to still be okay because the higher you turn up that gain the more it's going to pick up echo or background noise so start low and then turn it up up only when you really have to. Probably one of the best design features of this microphone is the tap to mute. On the top of the microphone there is a touch sensitive mute button which when I press it will mute the microphone and you can tell that it's muted because it actually turns off the light. So no longer do you have an excuse during a zoom call or a streaming session as to the fact that oh I forgot my mic was off because the mic turns itself off. And another really good thing is that when you tap the mic to mute it, you can't hear a tap when you turn it on and off. Certainly some other mics that have switches and when you click it, you can hear the click in the audio. So that feature really, really well done. There is also a built-in headphone jack at the back, which allows you to plug in any standard pair of headphones with a three and a half mil jack. So you can then hear the audio rather than having to hear it out of your PC. That's really useful when you're trying to change the gain to adjust the volume of your audio pickup. Connectivity wise, both mics come with a three meter USB cable, which is super useful, which means that the mic can pretty much go anywhere in a desktop setup without the need for a USB extension cable. And as I said at the start, the Quadcast comes with a mini USB port and the Quadcast S comes with a USB-C port. Now the difference in USB connections doesn't affect the sound quality, but I really would have liked a USB-C port on the Quadcast. It's not a killer, it's just a little annoying. And device compatibility wise, both mics work with a PC, PS4, PS5, and a Mac. Now, as we are talking about the Quadcast S, there are some unique features which I've kind of mentioned already. I've already gone through the USB port being a difference. The RGB or the two-zone RGB is the other biggest difference here. So with the Quadcast S, you can use HyperX's Ingenuity software to configure the RGB on the mic. Now, this leads me to one of the criticisms about the Quadcast microphones, and that's its software. The HyperX Ingenuity software allows you to configure the RGB on the Quadcast S 
But that's it, that's the only thing you can configure. Now if you compare that against the likes of Blue and Elgato that also provide software with their microphones where you can have multi-input streams or completely configure the sound signature of the microphones, well, when I'm looking at a microphone, I want to be able to configure the sound. I don't really care about how it looks. So not having that on the HyperX microphones just feels like a massively missed opportunity there. And it certainly puts them on a back foot when you compare it against the competition. It's a shame because otherwise this is a great microphone. Now there are features that this mic has that others don't know. Unlike most other USB microphones in the market, this microphone has a pop filter and a shock mount already built into the microphone. You don't have to go and buy it extra. Now the pop filter here is gonna help with blocking out those P's and the T's and the B's and your plosives which hopefully you've heard well enough, or rather not, during the audio of this video already. And the shock mount that is built into the mic here also comes with a 3 8 and 5 8 adapter, so it's pretty much gonna fit any mic stand or boom arm that you've got. If you don't intend to mount it, then having it on this stand is also good as well. This stand actually has a pretty good weight to it. It's not light and plasticky, and it will certainly stand your mic firm. I will say though, if you are gonna use this for streaming and you intend to be clacking away on your keyboard quite a bit, then I would definitely put this on a boom arm and I would recommend that for any mic, not just this one. So having all this functionality certainly plays into the cost when comparing it against the competition. The HyperX Quadcast is $140, although at the moment it is $119 on Amazon at the time of this video. The Quadcast S is $160, so that is $20 more expensive than the standard Quadcast. So you are paying an extra 20 bucks for essentially RGB. Things get more interesting though when you start comparing it against some of the competition. So let's compare it against the Blue Yeti X. Now this is a microphone that costs $170, but with that you are getting the Blue Voice software that comes installed on the PC with the mic. That gives you significant ability to control the audio quality and the audio sound profile when you're recording your audio. You can even go and make yourself sound like a robot if you want to. It's a great app that costs nothing extra and is free when you buy the mic. However, what does cost extra is the pop filter and the shock mount because the Yeti X doesn't come with it out of the box. So if you add those up, the official shock mount for the Blue Yeti is the Radius 3 shock mount, that's $50. Then if you add a generic pop filter, on average they're about 20 bucks, that gives you a total of $240. That's $100 more than the Quadcast and $80 more than the Quadcast S. If you compare it against the Elgato Wave 3, that's a $150 microphone. That does only have one polar pattern though, which is the cardioid pattern, rather than the four that is offered by the quadcast. However, it does that one pattern really, really well. What the Wave series of microphones has is Elgato's Wavelink software. This allows you to mix up to nine input channels, so if you are streaming and things like that, that is a great piece of software to have. And like the Yeti, it doesn't come with a shock mount and it doesn't come with a pop filter. You can get both for the Wave 3 for about $70. That puts the total cost of the Elgato Wave 3 at $220. So now if you look at the total price comparisons, the Quadcast was $140, the Quadcast S was $160, the Blue Yeti X was $240, and the Elgato Way 3 was 220. And that all leads nicely into should you buy it? Well, considering you get a pop filter and a shock mount all built into the package out of the box for a very good price, it's a hard value proposition to ignore. However, the lack of additional sound software in your PC is really starting to hamper it when compared against the competition. It is significantly cheaper whilst maintaining comparable audio quality though. So think of it this way. If you want a good, simple, clean USB microphone that has good sound, works out of the box, has a lot of the extra features already available with it, then the Quadcast and the Quadcast S are a good buy. If, however, you want more customization over your sound, then alternatives from the like of Blue and Elgato represent a more enticing buy, although they do so at a more expensive price point. I will place purchase links to all of these in the description down below for you. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you decide if this is the microphone for you. If you have enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and share it. Consider subscribing if you're not. And as always, see you in the next one.